Okay, I'm Bob Green with Frontier Precision, and I'm here today to talk to you about capitalizing on your investment. Prior to getting into sales, I had a small business and I purchased equipment from Trimble. And back in the day, we thought we actually bought it from Charlie Trimble. Um, there was a story done in a periodical back about a decade ago. And what they talked about is how little a person used their RTK system. And the number was about 30% of its capacity because be between RTK or real-time kinematic, there's PPK, there is differential, there is static, there is integrated in combinations of all of the above. Um, so today I'm gonna to talk about getting the most bang for your buck without having to spend any money in this particular case. I had done a job for the Bureau of Reclamation oh many years ago and we had to drive to a top of a dam and when we got to the top of the dam it was hard to turn around our base point was up there so we had to set up on that point and the whole process took almost an hour it would have been great if I could have just dropped my technician off and um, had him get to work while I set up the base and got it going um, so it would have been great in that case to have two controllers. I only have one. So what I'm going to show you today is how to start your base station with your cell phone. Um, I'm actually going to get out of the wind so that you can hear me better and get on a bigger screen on my laptop. But this can be done with your cell phone, a tablet, um, any Windows device or um, really any um, cell phone whether it be Android or um, uh, iPhone. Um, so as you can see right now, my base station is not broadcasting and I'm gonna get it to broadcast by using the um, software of the receiver and what's called the web UI. Um, and this will give you a little introduction to that web UI and we'll get the base fired up and then we'll come back out in the field to make sure everything is working. Okay, so now we are inside, out, out of the wind, and we're going to do step number one. And step number one here is to uh, get off of the internet if you are on the internet, and um, we're going to connect up to the, um, the web UI of the unit. So the first thing we need to do is look at our available Wi-Fi's. If your R10 unit um, is on, you will now see it show up as a Wi-Fi device. Keep in mind, Wi-Fi needs to be turned on, which it is by default on the R10 or R10.2 or R12. Um, right now, I'm on the internet, as you can see. Um, but what I'd like to do is connect to this Trimble GNSS 0984. You'll see one, um, but your last four digits will be different than mine because these are the last four digits of the serial number of the receiver that we are interfacing with. So I am going to pick it and go to connect. It will take a minute to connect up. Um, and when it does, it will tell me that there is no internet available, and that is fine. I'm not looking for an internet connection. I'm looking for a Wi-Fi connection, a pairing or partnership um, between my device and the receiver. If, however, there was a SIM card in the um, R10, then um, you could use it as a mobile hotspot, kind of handy. Uh, if you're in and out of hotel rooms like I am, uh, hotel room Wi-Fi kind of sucks, and you could um, be in charge of your own destiny with your own uh, um, personal hotspot. So as you can see, it, it uh, says no internet, and that's just fine. Next step, we want to go to the defaulted IP address of the um, um, receiver, and all of them are the same, which is 192. 168.142.1. Hit enter, and we are now on the web UI. We'll type in the defaulted username on all units. It's the same admin 
lowercase. And then password defaulted is password, lowercase. However, when you do this, depending on the firmware on your receiver, it may tell you to change that password. So once we get logged in, all you might see is the security tab, and that will be where you would go and change your password. So um, I'll put mine in here. And hit OK. So now I am logged on to the, um, the web UI. Um, this web UI is extremely powerful. Um, I'm not sure why it's not uh, used more than I see it being used out in the field. It can do a lot of things, but um, the, I'm going to just uh, talk about a couple of them. Uh, one thing that I'm not going to cover, if, however, you wanted to get Opus data simultaneous um, with your RTK data, you could go into the data logging tab. Um, uh, but I'm not going to get into that on this uh, particular um, video. Uh, so I am going to start in at receiver configuration. The first item I'm going to go to is antenna. Um, it should read whatever your antenna is, uh, R10 or R102 or R12, um, and all this should be defaulted. With the exception of your antenna measurement method, it will default to antenna phase center, um, and that's a tough assignment because you can't see it, so you really can't measure to it. So make sure you change it to what you are measuring to. I'm measuring to the lever of R10 extension. And then put in your HI in meters, and that is my HI, 1.32. And there is a box down here for um, uh, antenna corrections applied to RTCM. Um, you don't need that, so if it's checked, you can keep it checked. If not, it, it doesn't really matter one way or the other because we're not broadcasting RTCM. Now hit OK. And step one is complete on the antenna side. Now we'll go to reference station. You will give it a CMR ID. You'd probably want to make this CMR ID the same that is in your survey style in Trimble Access. So when you set up your survey style for RTK, um, that you, you need to give um, a station ID or a CMR ID. And um, you want to mimic that. I'm going to use two. Um, you'll give it a station name uh, if you already have a name on it and you've been doing work out there in the past. You want to call it the same name um, and you can give it a code. Then um, typically when I get down to the position here, keep in mind you'd want to know what the latitude and longitude of your point is. So you can simply get that in the uh, point manager uh, in, uh, on Trimble Access. And I usually start off here just by hitting the here key. Then you can simply backspace out the last couple digits and put in what is truly on your um, on the sheet that you wrote down your latitude, longitude, and height. Make sure that is both north and west longitude, um, and you're good there. Um, so this is a geographical display. You can, I kind of like using the 3D Cartesian or centered earth fixed XYZ because there is no degrees, minutes, and seconds symbology. Um, and then Trimble uses the term geographical, which really would be if the earth were a perfect sphere, a geographical coordinate would be on a perfect sphere. We're not a perfect sphere, but nonetheless, they just use that to separate latitude, longitude, and height values from 3D Cartesian earth-centered earth fixed values. So um, we're going, to, you can do an auto average if you like. We're not going to get into that. I just usually press the here key a couple times, make sure it doesn't jump around and accept it, um, and then hit OK. So next, um, we've now got our antenna set up, our reference station set up. We're going to go down to um, IO config. 
and this is the defaulted IO config page. Um, keep in mind, we're going to set up an internal radio broadcast. If you were to set up a external radio like a TDL, uh, there is the um, serial settings that you can set up in here as well. Uh, all we're going to focus on today is the um, the internal radio. So IO config, we'll go to port configuration. In port configuration, um, we're going to pull down and we're going to go to the radio port configuration. Um, make sure that we're uh, broadcasting CMR. Uh, compact measurement record and then importantly you have to do it down below of what type of CMR that you want we want CMRX naturally on any um, uh, newer um, uh, Trimble receiver CMRX is a proprietary um, data packet that is 30% more compressed than CMR plus getting more of that um, modernized GNSS data uh, to you from base to rover. Um, there is a millisecond dis um, delay option here as well. I'm um, not going to get into that here, but it, it does help stack multiple users on the same frequency. So all users get the same 13. This way we can stack uh, multiple um, on the same frequency. So um, we're going to keep it at zero milliseconds and hit OK. So now we've got our IO config set up for our radio. Then we're going to go down to the radio tab itself. And we are going to go to the radio configuration. And we're going to look at, make sure the radio is turned on. Um, and uh, look at our options here. We're going to be transmit with no repeaters. Um, if you did want to use a TDL as a repeater, that would be transmit with one repeater. If it was a rover, that would be a receive configuration. Um, and one big point here, repeater one. Trimble is probably the only company that allows you to use your rover not only as a receive radio but as a repeater so that while you're collecting data set up as a repeater, possibly working on a corridor um, a half a mile away from the base. You may have a co-worker working three miles from the base. You can collect your data and then repeat it to him. So um, that's really a great feature. Um, a lot of my um, mining customers use this a lot down in their um, pits and everybody is a repeater. Um, I'm not sure if I agree with that 100%, but that's what they do. Um, a lot has changed since the um, narrow banding initiative from the FCC in 2013. So if you decide to get a little risky, I just give us a call at Frontier Precision to make sure that you have all the right settings. Um, so we're going to pick transmit with no repeaters. My frequency of choice is going to be 464.5. The wireless mode needs to match base to rover. And uh, we're going to look at Trim Talk V1 at 9600 baud over the air. So that is correct. Again, you'd have to check your own individual baud rate to see if it varies. Um, here's our, the selectable options. Here we have the power level. As you can see, we can choose between two watts and a half a watt. The um, R10 series um, does have a two watt transmit. The um, R8Ss uh, only have the half a watt option. So these are four times as powerful to minimize the amount that you would need to uh, use a repeater out in the field. Um, if you needed to add a receive only frequency, so, for instance, you're on a military base and you have their frequency, you can key it in right here um, because these units are um, uh, compliant uh, with government frequencies in the 410 to 430 megahertz range. So that's kind of a nice little feature there as well. And we should be done. Um, I'm going to hit OK here. 
And the next thing I'm going to do is head back out into the field, make sure that my base is broadcasting. Also, keep in mind that if you if this is uh, technology new to you and you've never used this before, please make sure you have some checkpoints out in the field that you can verify um, to make sure everything is working okay. So I'm going to head back in the field, so we'll see you in a couple of seconds. Okay, one thing I forgot to mention while I was inside, um, the main button to get to the full menu is right here. Okay, so if you don't see that, slide your screen back and forth and you'll get to the full menu on your cell phone. And as you can see now, my base is broadcasting. Actually, my Wi-Fi is on and that's important for this application. If by some chance you set uh, shut it off, you want to make sure your Wi-Fi is on because that's how we connect it to the receiver. It's come over to our controller. And as you can see, we are now um, receiving data. So we got data link is up. And I can now go in here. Enter and measure a point. Observation stored. Okay, so as you can see, I started my base station with my cell phone and in my BOR example, I could have dropped my guy off down at the job site, went up, fired up the base, called him on his cell phone, told him, hey, base is going. He could have started collecting points while I was driving back to help him out. So a great application. Um, again, this doesn't cost you anything. We're simply using the web UI encased into the R10, R10-2, or the um, R12. I will be doing a series of these capitalizing on your investment videos, probably once every couple of months. So stay tuned for more tips and tricks.